managing an economy properly matters. The Barbados Labour Party therefore takes great pride in our efforts to manage and to develop our Barbadian economy over the decades. We also treat it, colleagues, as a badge of honor that we are accused by our opponents of paying too much attention to the economy. By contrast, the people of Barbados have come to feel in the most disgracefully painful way the disastrous consequences when a government such as that of the DLP feels that it does not have to put the management of the economy at the front and at the center of its attention. The consequence has been that Barbados has been transformed from being among the best managed and the best performing economy in the Caribbean to being among the worst, not just in the Caribbean, but globally. Indeed, all of the major indicators of performance have shown serious decline. And as such, the concept of junk not only applies to the country's credit rating, but can be applied to every aspect of government policies and every aspect of the DLP's economic performance. First, for the first time ever over the term of a government, our economy is being returned to the people smaller than at the start of that government's term. The value of what Barbados has produced has declined by 6% since 2007. Secondly, our people have become poor. The incidence of poverty in poor, poor too. The incidence of poverty in 2010 was 19.7% of the population as compared to 12% in 1998. Per capita income, the average income of the early Barbadian has dropped from $28,018 in 2007 to $26,222 in 2011. That performance amounts to junk. The bite has been largely felt in the pocketbooks of Barbadians of every class. Prices have risen by over 30% since 2007, while the incomes of Barbadians, especially in the public sector, have been largely frozen. The pinch of poverty is now being felt everywhere for the fastest great items in the retail price indices have not been luxuries, but they have been basic goods. The price of fuel and light has increased by 62% since 2007. Food, a basic, by 35%. As performance goes, that is junk. The dismal performance also hurts where it matters most, access to jobs. Unemployment in Barbados has risen from 6.7% in December 2007 to 12.5% at June 2012. In the interval, the number of persons employed has declined by almost 10,000 persons over the four years. So, Fredel and Chris Eglin, we are not seeking office to do that which you have done for yourself, sent home 10,000 good citizens. There's also a significant amount of short weeks and much unemployment, underemployment in Barbados. This is junk. People and enterprises in Barbados are now saving less and investing less. Households and companies under this DLP have had to draw down over $1 billion in savings between 2007 and 2011 just to make ends meet in this land. Investments have fallen by over $600 million over the period of 31% in what 
declare this performance, colleagues, is junk. The sectors where the greatest progress should be made have also been the areas where the greatest difficulties are being experienced. It has to be junk for a government to allow 2,700 jobs and billions in new income and investment to go begging in the international business sector purely by reason of its failure to act. As regards the tourism industry, the most recent statistics show that arrivals were down by 13.6% for August, 6.4% for September, and 11.1% for the first 19 days of October this year. Arrivals for this year, when we have to depend upon tourism, could fall by 9%. The Caribbean Tourism Organization has shown that in regard to the percentage change in arrivals of the 24 countries in that organization, Barbados was 22nd on the list, the third from the bottom, and only one of six countries which registered a decline this year. Over the past year, past four years, the industry has lost some 30 hotel apartments and guest houses amounting to 1,300 rooms. While all of this has been happening, the Barbados Tourism Authority has been starved of funds. Indeed, at this moment of crisis, our Tourism Authority finds itself unable to pay its creditors or to mount new programs to bring our industry back from the brink, while this wasteful government pumps thousands of dollars into a political football tournament. Colleagues, this is junk. It is also junk for our government of Barbados to so mismanage the country's public finances that it has to borrow almost half a billion dollars every year, not to create new capital assets for the future, but to pay its current bills. It is junk for the government to pretend and to keep telling the people that its fiscal strategy is on track and it is working when it owes the UWI over $170 million, when companies and people cannot get back their tax refunds, and when some of you public employees living from paycheck to paycheck cannot get money due to you on a timely basis. It is John colleagues for the government to allow the Barbados National Oil Company to rake in over $200,000 in profits from the sale, 200 million, sorry, in profits from its sale of fuel oil to Barbados like the power. As part of its effort, it says, to recover loss of 100 million, to take in 200 million, giving rise to the 62% increase in the price of electricity with which you have been penalized. That has to be shown. It is also done for the government to have imposed a hundred million dollar increase in taxes in 2008 on an economy about to go into recession. It has been even more done for it to keep increasing the rate of tax on the economy as it got smaller and smaller and smaller. Above all, it is junk for the government to believe that you can get prosperity from the imposition of policies to create austerity. A change has to come. On its present course, the Barbados economy will continue in a downward spiral that can lead to the loss of all the gains that we have realized since independence. We of the Barbados Labour Party are proud of the record of achievements we recorded as a government between 1994 and 2008 in developing our economy. But I say to you that as the next government of Barbados, we do not propose to simply return to old policies or even to the old familiar ways of doing things. Indeed, in a world rocking with change, new questions must be asked and new answers sought to old questions. For example, 
we can no longer look to protectionist instruments such as licenses or quotas to assist agriculture and manufacturing as could have been done before 1994. In addition, the unique tax benefit with Canada that helped to make Barbados the third largest location for Canadian investors in the world is no longer available to us only, but is now also available to our neighbors in the Caribbean who are anxious and doing their best to snatch business from us. One way to the free access for exports to the markets of our traditional partners is coming to an end with the new EPA with Europe and with the proposed new trade agreement with Canada. In addition, the regime of fiscal incentives that has been used to develop our manufacturing and our international business industry is being challenged before the WTO and we have a waiver on the use of such incentives until 2015. New instruments, new policies and programs to make Barbados more competitive, to create growth by relying more on innovation and increased productivity, to create growth by relying on a new culture to spur entrepreneurship as a tool of development, and the radical removal of all of the constraints on doing business in our land must be urgently pressed into service as the basis on which we put this country back on a path for growth. For these to be successful, however, there must be an immediate and a comprehensive reversal of the main policies which the Democratic Labour Party has recently, over four years, imposed on the people. It is very clear that most of these policies were recommended by the International Monetary Fund. The increase in the VAT, the removal of the tax-free allowances, the new taxes on energy products, the increase in fees charged by government agencies, the pursuit of macroeconomic policies to depress local demand, ostensibly to protect the foreign exchange reserves, venues reserved at a level in excess of the most needed for safety. All of these were policies contained in Article 4 surveillance report of the International Monetary Fund. The reason why those policies must be reversed it's not only because they have failed, but because the very authors of these policies are, are confessing that they have not and they cannot work in our Barbados. We were, comrades, if you would be called, being constantly assured by the central bank that these policies were working. Indeed, the government of the Central Bank even recently assured the public that there were no alternative to the policies that this government was pursuing. It is therefore necessary that the people of Barbados be informed of what the government of the Central Bank said at a breakfast meeting in Japan on October the 14, 2012 to the managing director of the IMF and to the president of the World Bank and I quote him slowly. I quote. He said, over bacon and eggs. He said, we persistently and consistently get bad advice from the International Monetary Fund. I have worked in Central Bank for almost 40 years. So I have, I have, I know and I have known the IMF through much, many iterations. And I have worked for the fund itself for 10 years. And we have consistently got bad advice on our policy options because the model is wrong. And we need to change that if you are going to be helpful to us going forward. This is not me. This is Dr. Delilah Murray. The advice is bad, he says. The model is wrong. The IMF model which Dr. World told the fund is wrong. 
For which he has been telling the Barbados public is right. It's one that seeks to cure economic problems by reducing spending through means that take money out of people's pockets to increase taxes, increase fees, raise freezes, and the like. We have been pleading with the government ever since 2008 to let our people keep more money in their pockets so that their spending can help to keep this economy away. And if the foreign exchange reserves at record levels, we have called for measures to stimulate demand at home for Barbadian goods and services to help create the conditions for the economy to grow. We have called and will continue to call for the reversal of the punitive taxes and fees that have driven our economy into the ground and further and further into recession. We have pointed out the folly of policies which have driven energy prices sky high and our economy into the ground. We have pleaded and continue to plead for tax relief for the middle class and for the return of the allowances, all to no avail. So for the government of the Central Bank to give the IMF lectures on how wrong their policies have been in Barbados, while he has been so enthusiastic a supporter of them in public in Barbados, is for him to rub salt into our wounds. We, however, agree entirely with the governor that there has to be a fundamental change in the macroeconomic policies being pursued by the government of Barbados and that an IMF-type model is unlikely to get the job done for us. Happily, happily as a party, we have had to go the non-IMF way before and successfully so. In 1994, we assumed office and found a secret deal in place with the IMF for the government to implement an enhanced surveillance program in Barbados, featuring, featuring demand reduction, the increase in fees, rents, and taxes all across the board. We chose not to pursue it. We chose rather to trust the people. We chose to trust the people by giving them incentives to help build Barbados by saving and investment. We gave them incentives to industries earning foreign exchange. Since energy is such a critical input, we systematically decided to reduce taxes on all energy products. We reformed the indirect tax system by, increase, by introducing a VAT at 15% where it needs to return. We radically reduced the tax on companies from 40% to 25% and on small businesses from 40% to 12.5%. We radically reformed the income tax and the land tax. We liberalized the telecommunication sector. We introduced special legislation to promote development in areas such as Spikes Town, St. Lawrence Gap, and Bridgetown. We introduced special technical assistance program to restructure enterprises in agriculture and manufacturing. We created fund access and enterprise growth fund to provide conceptual finances to micro and small businesses. And when Barbados' vital economic interests were challenged as they were threatened by the OECD, we vigorously defended those interests to the death and succeeded in giving Barbados a competitive advantage in the world as an international business and financial center among developing countries. 